Okay, another application of Faraday's law is the generator. And um, this is how it works. I want to tell you how it works. So if you have a magnetic field in the red and you have a coil of wire, by spinning that wire in that magnetic field, you are changing the magnetic flux through that hoop. And so um, because you're changing the magnetic flux, the in the hoop will be induced a, an EMF and, a, and if it's connected to a complete circuit, a current in the wire. So what you're doing is you're taking mechanical energy, the turning of the hoop, and you're turning it into electrical energy. So let me detail how that works. Okay, so um, here is um, a side view of the hoop. So like if, if this is the hoop and the, and the field is heading that way, then this one is going to look like that. So it's straight on. Whereas um, the hoop is rotating then, and it's rotating um, about this axis. So it's rotating like this, like that would be that hoop then. You see how that's that hoop? And then it rotates like that. So the hoop is rotating around like, like such. Now, so it's got the most flux through it this way, and then it's only got um, a part of that flux this way. And now there's no flux, because you see how the, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing going through this window this way. The, all the field is that way. Okay, so, um, but you're turning it at, with a constant angular speed. And so omega, that, that W is an omega, and that's to show that, that that's the speed at which you're turning it. Okay. So, um, before we go any further, um, let's just talk about the flux then. Um, the flux, the field is going to be uniform. And the flux is just going to be this then. The magnetic flux, B, is going to be the B dot A. Now, is the B changing? No, the B is always uniform in, this, in my setup. Is the A changing? No, the area of the hoop is not changing. It's always the same area. What is changing is the orientation that the hoop makes with the field. And so that's how you're changing your flux. And so um, I want you to see that in this case, the A will be this way. That's the A vector. It's in the same direction as B. But in this one, the A vector is this way. So A is this way. That's the A vector, and here's the B vector. And so what you need to do is you need to only take, what the, what the dot product says is take the part of B that's in the direction of A. Or you can do the other, take the part of A that's in the direction of B. But if this is, if this is theta, if that angle is theta, then um, if I only want the part of B that's in the direction of A, that might be this part. And that part, to get this, this component of B, that is B cosine of theta. So that's going to be B cosine of theta times A. That gives me the same thing. Uh, remember that this is a scalar quantity. So the, what we're going to take from this, this sheet here is that the magnetic field, uh, I'm going to say, is just going to be B times A times the cosine of theta. It's the theta that's changing. Okay, so um, if that's the case, then the EMF that's induced in this hoop is going to be equal to um, negative N, depending on how many hoops we have, times how fast the flux is changing with time. D V D T. And so, um, but remember that the flux... The magnetic flux is going to just be B A cosine of theta. Now, something about theta. Theta is related to omega in that, you remember when something is rotating, the angular speed, the average angular speed is delta theta over delta T. Well, we can make that delta theta, we can make that um, theta final minus theta initial and t final minus t initial. But what if um, t initial is zero and theta initial is zero? So I'm gonna make these zero, get rid of them. And so omega is theta final over time final. 
And um, if I bring the time final on the other side, theta is just going to be equal to omega times t. Omega times, if you want to know um, where it's going to be at in its rotation, just multiply the t times omega. Okay, so my flux is going to be equal to b times a times the cosine, and I'm not going to write theta this time, but I'm going to write omega t. Okay, well that's what's going to go into here. So I come on over here, and I'm going to say that the EMF induced then is negative n, the derivative with respect to time, of the flux. Now this is the flux over here, b, a, times the cosine of omega t. Okay, well, uh, it turns out that the b and the a aren't changing with time, so I can bring them outside of the derivative. And so, um, when I take this derivative then, the cosine of omega t, used in the chain rule, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get this. It's going to be negative n b a and then I'm going to get when I take the derivative it's going to be an, an, an omega times the sine of omega t and um, that's going to be a positive now because because the derivative of, of a cosine is a negative sine okay so that's the emf that's induced and um, I'm going to rewrite that just on its own sheet of paper, and then let's see if we can make so sense of it. So coming over here then, the EMF that's induced by spinning um, a bunch of coils of wire through a magnetic field, the EMF that's induced is going to be equal to just writing it all out. I'm going to actually write it a little different, differently. Um, it's going to be, I'm going to write it as WNBA sine omega t. And so um, the reason I wrote that a little differently is because WNBA sounds like the Women's National Basketball Association. It's just a nice way to remember it. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I want to just make a little sense of this. So how, how do I get, when I'm, when I'm turning a generator, a handheld generator, let's say, how do I get the biggest EMF possible? Well, there's a few ways that I can up the amount of EMF. One is I can I can turn it faster. So remember, if you turn it real fast, the light bulb for our generator would light. The light bulb that the generator was connected to would, would light even brighter. Or I could add the number of turns. So if I increase the turns from like say one or two turns to a hundred turns, then that, that boosts up the the EMF as well. Or I could make the magnetic field that it was spinning in. I could make that bigger. Or I could make the area of the hoop bigger. I could just make the, the, the actual area of the hoop bigger. So all those different ways I can um, change the EMF. But if you notice, um, if I were to plot EMF versus time, it's a sine wave. And so it's going to go, be going something like this. And its maximum is going to be at WNBA sine theta, or WNBA. That will be its maximum. And its minimum will be negative WNBA sine theta. That's if I'm turning with a constant omega. So um, you're not generating constant power, but there are ways to um, make it a little bit more um, constant than this but right now you would be making if you hooked up to that you'd be making alternating um, voltage and and if it's co connected to a circuit alternating alternating current all right that's what I need to tell you bye